Alrighty, guys. So video number two. Uh, the next step of the journey, once we've got XAMPP already installed, is we also need to set up a database. All right, a Heroku database in the cloud. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up Heroku. Heroku allows you to create um, to create these uh, databases in the cloud. Uh, you do need to put in your payment. Um, just a credit card but Heroku is not going to charge you uh, unless you actually buy a product or buy a server that you want to pay for and a lot of the products are free for example launching a MySQL database in the cloud on Heroku is actually free so the way that you do it is you start off over here in personal right and then you do new right you're gonna do new uh, we could set up a new one but it would kind of be a pain uh, but you know what? Let's just let's let's actually do this entire process together. All right, new, create new app. Okay, what should we call this app? We're gonna call this app um, what? CSV to SQL. Okay, CSV to SQL is already is not available. CSC the SQL demo. Okay, and we're gonna choose a region and we're gonna say create an app. All right, once you create an app then you can actually add a resource to the app and the resource we want to add we do we do a search for the add-ons we're going to search mysql all right uh and you can choose whatever you want i personally like jaws db it hasn't failed me in the past jaws db all right and you see it's got all these uh, different types of sql databases i'm just going to go with a free one and i'm going to say submit the order beautiful now that I submitted the order, they spin up a free SQL database for me. I click that little button. It's going to take me to this page over here. Hmm. And that's pretty much all there is to it. I now have uh, this new connection string, and I got the host, the username, and the password, and the port, and everything. All right, cool. So now, when I go back into XAMPP, I'm actually going to do a split screen. Check this out. I press the Windows icon and to the left. Windows icon right, all right. So we got our PHP my admin on the left. We got the the live uh, the MySQL database in the cloud on the right, and we got all our credentials here. So we're within PHP my admin. I'm going to say new. And what do I want to do? Ah, I want to do a new database. Oh, okay, fine. Uh, first, I need to actually create this database. All right, let's really think think through how to do this. Ah, okay, okay. Um, okay, first thing we need to do is turn our... Uh, we're going to get back to this, to pushing the data into the cloud MySQL database in a moment. First, we need to take that CSV data and turn it into a SQL database. All right? Uh, so let's actually do that. Within PHP my admin, I press create, create a database. SQL, uh, sorry, CSV, right? CSV to SQL demo local. Okay, this is gonna gonna be a SQL database on my local machine. Okay, I always go with UTF-8, right? UTF-13, English, something 32. Uh, let's see. Hmm, let's see, where's English? UTF-32, general CI. Yeah, this usually does the job, and if it doesn't, it's okay. I will right, figure it out. Okay, general uh, and create. Okay, cool. Now that I've got my de my my database running locally, right? Then I'm going to go into the import feature. And now I can choose that CSV file that I just exported, desktop. Let's see, it's in my downloads. Okay, there's my campaign data. I choose that. Okay, over here. Uh some of the enable foreign key checks, fine. Oh, character set of the file, fine UTF-8. Format is CSV. Update data when duplicate keys found on import. Uh, don't worry about that. Okay, this is important. The first line of the file contains the table column names. If this is unchecked, the first line will become part of the data. So uh, I am going to check that because if you remember our, our actual data, it, what that means is row number one here is actually the column name. So these these titles from row number one are going to turn into MySQL tables, okay? And do not abort on insert insert error. If something goes wrong while you're trying to stuff this this CSV data into a C local SQL database, just keep on moving. All right, don't stop, never stop, never stop dancing. 
And sometimes it does take a little bit a little bit of time. If you've got a a really uh, a really big CSV file, it could crash. But and there's some workarounds around that, which you'll have to to um to uh, just just research. You'll have to make some changes to zap to your zap configuration if the CSV file is too large. If you have any questions on that, just feel free to reach out. All right. Uh, 526. Alrighty, guys. Okay, cool. So everything works successfully. Now, now that the data is in my SQL database, on my local SQL database, all I need to do is take this SQL database and upload it uh, and export it first. And then I'll upload this SQL database into our, into our live live uh, cloud SQL database. All right, so here we go. Step number one, how do I actually export this? Ah, there's an export feature over here. All righty, let's have a look at it. All right, cool. Export template, format is SQL, template name. Nah, that's okay, I'm just gonna press go. All right, cool. CSV to SQL demo, it, dot SQL. You'll notice it's a dot SQL file at this point. Oh, by the way, we've got table one over here. Okay, uh, let's see over here. Okay, cool. So all the data is now in in our local SQL database. Hmm. You know what? We may want to change some of these columns. We also uh, let's let's have a look at the table for a second. All right, let's look at the structure here. All righty, here you see everything here is a var char thirteen. So the type the column type is also important over here. Click time, install time, install date. These need to be changed into date format before we actually export. So you know what? Cancel this. Ex Let's go into the downloads and just delete that file for a second. Alrighty, we're gonna delete that SQL file. Uh, if anything is confusing, again, feel free to reach out. Hopefully, this will be clear. Alrighty, so um, uh, now if I go into my type, I know that this click time and install time. Uh, these two, the a lot of these col um, columns are actually should be type date. So I'm gonna go ahead and change it, and I'm gonna choose the type is a date instead of type varchar. I'm gonna go into date. All right, uh, there we go. Oh, wait, it's actually a time. It's a date or a timestamp. We have to double check the data over here. Let's have a look at the data. Okay, let's see here. Uh, Okay, click time. Oh no, it's a timestamp. Install time is a timestamp. Everything is a timestamp over here. Install date, zero, zero. Click to install time. Uh, what's that? That's an actual amount of time. Mm, okay, we'll think that through through at a later stage over there. All right, meanwhile, let's just turn it, turn it into, into what? A date time? Timestamp. Timestamp is good. All right, timestamp, and we'll see if it works. Save. All right. Uh, too big precision. Thirteen specified for click time. Maximizes maximum is six. Okay, what if we turn it into a date? What about a date time? Let's try date time. Save. Mm, too big precision. We got to take that and actually Google it. Too big precision. Uh, let's see. What's the full error here? Save. 13 specified for click time uh, too big precision 13 too big precision 13 all right what 14 whatever good enough all right let's have a look at it mm. this works in my sequel there are two changes drop the 14 from the line last mod timestamp change my isum to engine equals my isum this mod, uh, 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 there could be a version mismatch for server configuration Oh, schnikes. It could be because our database wasn't the right format. All right. As usual, stuff goes wrong in the middle, as as usual. So I'm going to take some time to just try to try to Google this error and see if I can fix it. All right, guys? And I'll see you in the next one.